woman is charged with sticking her bees on police that were trying to serve an eviction notice. Wait, this woman can control bees? Can she keep my cat from napping on our pizza? How anti-abortion is Herschel Walker? Not very. Another woman came forward to say he paid for her abortion too. So if he's elected and you need an abortion in Georgia but can't get one, just call him. He'll get you taken care of. A recent survey found that most Republicans think scientists shouldn't get involved in policy decisions. But apparently it's just fine for policymakers to get involved in science stuff. As a physician, I've been in the room when there's some difficult t conversations happening. I don't want the federal government involved with that at all. I want women, doctors, local uh, political leaders. What branch of government are you even talking about? The Office of the Inspector Genitals? And just how local are we talking here, Oz? Because if the president of the HOA gets involved, I'm not going to be able to get a hysterectomy until I mow my yard a half inch shorter. Janitorial supply enthusiast and part-time senator Ted Cruz went on The View this week. It did not go well. Inflation has one cause and one cause only. In inflation in the United States has one cause and one cause only. Then he went to a Yankees game. That also did not go well. Things not going well for Ted Cruz is my new favorite show. Hashtag six seasons in a movie. The RNC has filed a lawsuit against Google for allegedly sending its emails to user spam folders. Because no one would ever mark a gem like this as spam, right? Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer faced off against Tudor Dixon in a debate this week where book bans were a key issue inappropriate content in school libraries. That's the biggest concern that I'm hearing about. Like, do you really think that books pose a greater danger to our kids than gun violence does? Now that's a very good point, but it's not why you should elect Whitmer. It's because Tudor Dixon's name is too easy to make fun of. Watch. She might be a tutor, but she just got schooled. Tudor? I hardly know her. Oh my God, what's that smell? Tudor, are you the tutor? Picture four whole years of the memes. We'd never get anything done. Lindsey Graham's effort to dodge questioning about January 6th was backed by Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, whose wife secretly, openly also tried to overturn a free and fair election. Justice Thomas decided that there was no pressing need to have a fellow conspirator be held accountable. So did I mention that voting is a good thing? Yeah, go vote. A Republican candidate in Oklahoma wants to force all teachers to attend patriotic education classes at a college in Michigan. Without even the barest hint of irony, he said he wants to do this because he thinks teachers are indoctrinating students. Well, at least their indoctrination is local. Yours is going to require a seatbelt demonstration. Bad news, fellow liberal cabal members. It looks like premier investigator Tucker does this bow tie make me look relatable Carlson has figured out our cunning master plan to eat babies. It's the main thing they care about. Why is that, by the way? It's a religion. It's a child sacrifice cult. The jig is up. What gave us away? Was it our insistence on women's rights? I guess we'll go turn ourselves into the Proud Boys and tell Antifa to stop burning everything down. Man. We would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for Tucker Carlson and his bow tie, which makes him look so macho and handsome. Nancy Pelosi came out swinging for the nuts this week, saying that Donald Trump isn't man enough to sit for an interview with the January 6th committee. Trump fired back, saying the committee isn't even his type. Higher Education's before picture, Marjorie Taylor Greene, says she's in talks with pre-felon Donald Trump to be his next running mate. It's an old political strategy from the 1900s called dialing up the cray cray to 11. Penn State, which apparently does not teach history, invited the Proud Boys to an event on campus where the Proud Boys promptly attacked protesting students. Now, you may think that the university made a really dumb decision here inviting people who are clearly violent to come and do violence, but the truth is they got some really bad advice beforehand. Folks, if you live in the UK and pay any attention to politics, the past couple weeks has probably felt like this. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. But now there's a new prime minister in town. 
With us here to discuss is our friend from the interesting times, Matt Johnston. Matt, thanks for stopping by. Good to be e here. First of all, I want to say congratulations on your new prime minister. I heard he's pretty good with money, so he'll probably get the economy sorted out pretty quickly, yes? Oh yes, he's very good with money, especially his own. And he'll certainly be good with the economy, if you're one of the bankers in the city, or CEO of a large planet-hating oil company, this man is manna from heaven. If you're not, and you haven't quite hit rock bottom yet, don't worry, it's coming. Essentially, he's got to balance the books, so he can either do that either by raising taxes to the rich or cutting funding to essential services for the poor. I mean, this is a Conservative Party. Do you even have to ask? So what kinds of bold new policy proposals can we expect from a Rishi Sunak-led government, according to what you know about him so far? First and foremost, he will introduce more cuts than a swashbuckling surgeon with the tremors. The big surprise, though, is the return of Suella Breverman as Home Secretary. She resigned after breaking security protocol six days ago. Six days! I would call it a weak government, but they're not lasting that long. So, Matt, the past couple of months has meant a lot of change for the British government and the monarchy. What's it been like to experience so much upheaval in such a short amount of time? Like a roller coaster that only goes downwards. Do you have any tips for coping with change that you'd like to share with our viewers? You mean, apart from don't move to the UK? Well, we are famed for our drinking. In fact, you may soon find several thousand bottles washed up on the eastern seaboard. Empty, except with a handwritten note inside. Send booze. So Matt, I want to talk about something that has taken on a lot of importance recently in British politics, and that is vegetables. Uh, now, Liz Truss was famously unable to outlast a head of lettuce, and I'm curious, if we measure by vegetables, how long do you think Rishi Sunak's term will last? Are we looking here at, like, a very fleeting avocado, or perhaps a more tenacious potato? Well, I'll certainly go with the potato. It'll last a fairly long time. Nobody's that much of a fan of it, and it's fairly bland. And he's certainly going to mash up all the public services. The big thing, of course, is that this is a Conservative Party that is still fighting. So in a sense, a good chance they're going to scratch each other's eyes out. So are you saying he might drive a potato wedge into the party? You could say they'd had their chips. All right, everyone, if you haven't subscribed to The Interesting Times on YouTube yet, please go do that. Please send a carton of booze across the pond. And Matt, thanks for stopping in. Lovely to have you as always. Send booze. Russia claims that Ukraine is about to set off a dirty bomb, in which case they'd be justified in using nuclear weapons. Man, Putin's just dying to do a nuclear war, isn't he? Please, just let me set off one little nuclear bomb. Just a teensy-weensy one. I'd rather have a toddler with a fistful of knives in charge of Russia. Folks, you've heard about Kanye West being dropped by his talent agency, by his ex-wife, and by Adidas, but that's not why he's no longer a billionaire. Nope, there's a constellation of lesser-known brands that he's also been dropped from that are really hurting him. Let's take a look in our new segment, Drop Him Like He's a Hot Mess. First up, Crazy Pills. The manufacturer of everyone's favorite over-the-counter hallucinogen said, Yay's too batshit even for us. Next up, Trouty, the vegan fabric softener brand. Wait, is there meat in fabric softener? The Jewish News Network no longer wants him as their chief fashion and entertainment correspondent for reasons that seem pretty obvious. And finally, Peloton is dropping their entry-level cycling classes called Exercise Made Yeezy and replacing them with Cycle Like You Haley Joel Osmented. Oh, this just in? Kanye apparently showed up at Skechers headquarters with a camera crew to see if they wanted to work with him. The Jewish-owned business responded with a hard pass that was so hard, it actually made diamonds jealous. Bed Bath & Beyond announced a new CEO, causing its stock to immediately plummet. The new CEO? Ooh, yikes. Okay, let's stop dunking on Kanye and dunk on Elon Musk instead. Elon showed up to Twitter headquarters gleefully carrying a sink to let that sink in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Stock the liquor cabinet, folks. It's about to get weird. Interpol, the global police organization that you know about because of spy movies, has launched its first metaverse. 
That brings the number of people using the metaverse up to seven. Also, the banned Interpol would like to make it abundantly clear that they are not at all in the metaverse. A major investor has written an open letter to Mark Zuckerberg, urging him to change course. We have a copy of that letter here. Dear Mark, no one likes the metaverse. You're hemorrhaging money and you're a weirdo. Please go back to making money again. Hugs and kisses, Brad Gerstner. A new study shows that kids who play video games score higher on brain function tests. Not sure who commissioned that study, but here is the cover sheet of that report. Philadelphia greased their light poles to keep Phillies fans from climbing them, but they did it anyway. So I guess grease isn't the word? And if grease doesn't work, what will? Lard? The white stuff from Oreos? I'm open to suggestions because this pole climbing thing is a scourge and must be stopped. Tired of boring old sports like baseball and football and other stuff with balls? Try face slapping. That's right, there's a new face slapping league that's leaving its handprint on modern history. Of course, the first rule of face slap club is no talking about the Oscars. People are very upset with the garden coffee wife on Twitter who made a tweet about enjoying time with her husband. I hesitate to say this because I know I'm gonna get backlash, but here goes. My husband and I went out to dinner together and I liked it. And finally tonight, rats with tiny little backpacks are being trained to help rescue earthquake survivors. I don't have a joke here. I just want you to look at them with their adorable little backpacks. How fucking cute is this? Folks, our live election night special is just around the corner. If you want to watch it, sign up for our newsletter at sanphoenix.com slash phoenix-flyer. Go early vote and we'll see you next week.